By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have magic for you from the Knights of Thorn Championships in Deventer. And this is the oldest old school tournament in the Netherlands. Uh, I also reported on uh, this same tournament because it's held twice a year. So I have footage of the previous edition that was held in 2019. Uh, if you'd like to see those matches, you can click on the info card that's appearing right now. There are some pretty cool matches in there, I can tell you. Uh, but for now, I have a first round game from the winter edition of the Knights of Thorn. And in this game, we have Dead Guy Ill taking on a Power Monolith Brew. And the Power Monolith Brew is actually played by Mari, the organizer of this tournament. So that's always nice when we also get to see the tournament organizers in action. Now, if you'd like to go straight to the matches, you can check the description below, click on the timestamp, it'll take you straight to game number one. Um, for now, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to do a little bit of deck tech. I don't have a deck list or a deck picture, but I do know these decks and I do know what these decks want to do. So that's basically what I'm going to discuss with you in the deck tech. So let's take a look at deck number one. The player on the left is playing Dead Guy Ill. And Dead Guy Ill means he's playing black and white. And basically what this deck wants to do, it wants to get a lot of value for a little for little cost. So get a lot of bang for your buck. And obviously we have the famous white spell, Swords to Plowsiers and Disenchant, playing with a full play set of both. Um, one of the most powerful spells in old school magic. Uh, also playing here with a play set of Dark Ritual. Again, just investing one black mana, getting three black mana in return, which is opening up some possibilities. For example, playing a Hypnotic Spectre, but also being able to mind twist for more mana, uh, for more cards, I mean, because you have more mana, so your opponent has to dis discard more. Uh, another thing that I'd like to point out here is the Mistress Factory. Um, the reason for this is that I believe in this matchup, Mistress Factory could be pretty decisive because the Power Monolith player um, actually wants to remove spells by countering them. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of artifact removal, I believe maybe none in his main board. So that is going to be tricky. So a Mistress Factory cannot be countered. Um, so perhaps that could play a, a big role in this matchup. Uh, also, you see a Black Knight here. Uh, usually Dead Guy Ill decks play with Black Knight. It's just another way to put some pressure on the board. It's also a great blocker, by the way, because of that first strike. If you have two Black Knights as blockers on the board, you can just kill four fours all day long. Uh, which is which is pretty nice and i've actually had to deal with with some black knights and i couldn't get rid of them with my swords but in in this particular matchup i don't think black knight is going to be that powerful but it is just one of the creatures that you usually see in that guy and that's being used to to put pressure on the board so interesting to see here if that guy ill can play quick enough and can remove the key components of the power monolith player to, to win the game. Because what the Power Monolith player wants is kind of to get into that mid game because the longer the game takes, the more chances he has of assembling his combo pieces and um, yeah, kill the opponent. So that guy ill needs to play fast, remove the key pieces and you know, then he could be victorious. So let's take a look at the Power Monolith deck. So the player on the right, Maddie, is playing with the Power Monolith deck. Now, this is a classic combo deck, and basically what you want to do, you want to use Power Artifact and Basil Monolith together to generate endless amounts of mana and then cast a huge fireball. Personally, you know, my personal preference is when you play it with Dragon Engine and then you pump, you make Dragon Engine really big and you kill your opponent. But of course, that's not as effective and useful as when you just play a fireball. So I, I you know, this is this is the most effective way of doing it. I guess you can also use a brain geyser to deck your opponent. Now, other cards that we can find in this deck or mind twist, because I believe he's splashing black in this build, so not white, but he's chosen to splash black. So he's playing mind twist, he's playing demonic tutor to probably find his power artifact, basil monolith, or fireball, depending on what part of the combo he's still missing. Um, he's also playing Wheel of Fortune, he's playing Time twister um, of course he's playing ancestral recall because you know you want to get through your deck very quickly to find the combo pieces one of the most frustrating things of, of these decks is hey you've got a basil monolith you have a power artifact but you don't have the fireball or you have the basil monolith fireball in hand but you're missing your power artifact 
Uh, so whenever you're missing one of the three pieces, you want to put cards in your deck that can help you to find those key pieces as fast as possible. Now, obviously, a big threat here for Mahari is the Disenchant. Uh, casting a power artifact on your Basil Monolith, but in response, the Dead Guy Ill player plays a Disenchant over the Monolith. I mean, that's a huge problem because then your power artifact needs to find another uh, target or it fizzles, meaning it goes to the graveyard because there's no legal target. So that is uh, a, a big weakness here in the deck you could say now obviously because Mahdi is playing with blue he does have access to counter spells and i believe he's playing with a full play set of power sinks so you know he can he can sink a lot of stuff away so it's going to be very interesting i think at first glance i wonder if the power monolith uh, deck isn't too slow um, then again Mahdi is Mahdi knowing Mahdi he's playing with full power so that will give him definitely some advantage where the dead guy ill deck is mostly powerless so I, I do see some advantage here for the power monolith player I, I do think that there's definitely an, an options here for the dead guy ill player as well simply because the deck is very quick so um, this is an interesting matchup I'm very excited to have this on uh, the stream on round one so let's go to game number one and see what's going to happen game number one and it's the player on the left who's uh, on the play so that's a dead guy ill player and it looks like he's taking a mulligan here playing according to the London mulligan rule meaning you can just draw seven and if it's your first mulligan and you choose to keep you have to put one card on the bottom of your library And there he goes again, drawing seven. And is he going to keep? I can see a black knight in that hand. Playing a swamp passing turn. And, uh, oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> I want to say, is Mahdi going to do something? Uh, interesting opening here, by the way, playing that strip mine on the swamp and then a Mox Jet and a Black Lotus. Or a Mox Ruby, I should say. Sorry, a Mox Ruby and a Black Lotus. Playing a Volcanic Island. Look at that tapping for something big. And that's a Mind Twist. Unfortunately, we have some glare again, but look at that brutal Mind Twist for four. So this is going to be difficult now for the Dead Gael player. I mean, having to mulligan and then also have that early Mind Twist against you. But he's able to deal some damage with the factory and it looks like Smadi is not doing a lot. And there is a Black Knight as well, but there is a Power Sink. So it does mean he has to tap that um, factory for what it's worth. And we can see Madi is now going to 14 already. So that's 6 damage done by the factory. That's pretty impressive. More damage even, that's 8 damage. I'm just going to keep... A record here but there's a factory as well so that's a blocker for Mahdi in this case and look at that another factory is it going to attack and trade of course Mahdi is not going to block by the way because his factory still has summoning sickness so it's unable to pump itself that means that Mahdi is going to nine it's pretty low so far and we don't see any uh, monolith pieces here and there is a block there's the trade so that means no damage for Mahdi but he's already on nine he needs to start doing something here and let's see, it's interesting to see the dead guy ill player being in the game after that early mind twist. I thought he was toast. Uh, now Mahdi is on seven passing turn here. And the factories are really dominating this first uh, game here. Mahdi on five, there's a dark ritual, and then there's a Suchi. And will there be another counter spell? Yes, there is the power sink. So no Suchi here. But the factory is still there and only five life for Mahdi. Another factory, meaning he can bump the factory now, dealing three damage. Mahdi's on two. Wow, so this is really a factory game here. And Mahdi needs to do something. Unable, it looks like. And that's it, that's game. So that is death by factory. Um, that's, I must say, it's, it's pretty unexpected for me seeing that start of the game with that that just that brutal mind twist but i mean it shows for the dead guy ill player it must give him confidence that even when you when you only have one card in your hand after your first turn um you know you can still win it 
and and that's proven here so that's a, a first game win for the dead guy Ill player and let's let these players sideboard and we'll see them back in game number two game number two so it's the power monolith player gets to start look at that and there's a basil monolith unfortunately we have some glare again uh, but we know it's a basil monolith and look at that a good opening from the dead guy Ill player playing a dark ritual into hypnotic specter classic play here and if that hippie can stick it can do some damage ideally Mighty would simply cast a fireball now does he have one playing a book Passing turn here. Playing a planes, attacking. Dealing two damage and he loses a card. So that's a Basil Monolith out and there's a Disenchant. Oh, he's unlucky there. I saw a counter spell. His hand was almost empty. Oh, and again a Mind Twist. Mahdi is the Mind Twist King here. Brutal. But we saw in game number one that even after a mind twist, you can still be victorious. There is another hypnotic specter. And Mahdi's hand is empty. Of course, he does have that book, so that could be kind of decisive here. But if he chooses to draw now, so he's probably going to wait till the end step of his opponent. Because if he chooses to draw now, um, you know, it means that probably he, he loses that card to the hypnotic specters. There's an attack for four. So Mahdi is on 11 again. And let's see what he's gonna, going to do. Drawing from the book and drawing from his draw step. And we're waiting now. He has two cards in hand. It's really hard when you have two hippies against you because you know what card should I play out now and I'm going to lose the other card or am I able to play both cards out? It's really difficult. Also, when I play out a card, I'm probably no longer able to use my book. Do I want to use my book to see if I can generate my combo? And there is a fireball on at least one of the hippies. There is an attack. So he's losing a card. Went a little bit too, too quickly for me there. I couldn't see what card he uh, was discarding. But Maddy is going to 9 life here. And that's actually pretty useful, finding that strip mine. He'll be able to take out the Mishra's factory. Let's see, attacking now. Interesting, not activating the factory. That is a little surprising. Maybe he doesn't want to do it because he doesn't want to lose it to the strip mine. Or he has something else in hand. And end step again, that activation of the tome. Drawing some extra cards here. And playing the monolith. And now we've got the combo going. And if he has a... Fireball, <laughs> and he does have a fireball. Oh, that's it. And this is this is what happens with Power Monolith when you have the fireball, Power Artifact, Basil Monolith together. You win the game. It's as simple as that. And maybe that's something for the dead guy ill player to think. Should I've kept the disenchant? On the other hand, it makes perfect sense to want to di disenchant the book because the book is going to. Um, allow him to kind of get back into the game drawing extra cards so by disenchanting the book you're also kind of taking away the possibility for your opponent to find the key pieces for uh for the combo uh, so that means it's it's one one here and uh, we're going to a third game so exciting game number three is about to start uh we have the dead guy ill player on the play and um you know if this is if this is going to be at least the game where the dead guy ill player doesn't get twisted um, you know, that could be in his advantage as well. Look at that. I see a circle protection red there for the dead guy ill player. But he's not finding any white mana, it seems. Mahdi passing the turn after playing an underground sea. There's a dual land there to Savannah. So that gives him access to white mana. And there is a Mishra's factory. But the dead guy ill player doesn't really have the quick start that you might want. Interesting, passing a long turn, not playing that Suchi that's in his hand. And there he is again. Maybe he's, probably he's afraid of a counter spell. And there's a dark ritual. And let's 
Let's see what he's going to do. Playing a Mind Twist. Expecting a counter spell here. There is the counter spell. And then playing a Circle of Protection Red. Interesting. Kind of, I'm, I'm liking this gameplay first. Playing that Dark Ritual. Forcing Mahdi to play his counter spell. And then playing the Circle of Protection Red. If Mahdi now has a Power Sync, that would be pretty brutal. He does not. So it's untapping here. And the Circle of Protection Red could be really, really difficult here for Mahdi. But of course he had to counter that Mind Twist. Now let's see what he's going to do. Yeah, he's tapping three. Will we see a Basalt Monolith? And there's the Basalt Monolith in all its glariness. And there's a Disenchant, but there's a Counter Spell. Maybe an attack now for two here. Yeah, an attack for two. And that's actually the first damage being dealt in this game. And that makes you think that that's in the advantage. Oh, Basalt Monolith. And this is interesting because the Circle of Protection Red can prevent damage done by one source. But the Fireball can, of course, choose new targets every time it pays one. So I think they're kind of having a discussion now. What is actually happening here? And I actually don't know this rule. So if, if you know the rule... Let me know in the comments below. Let's see what these players decide. Because I'm sure the discussion is you can pay one to prevent damage from one source. And there is a phone showing something. And this is nice about old school. Always these um, rule discussions, even though you've had the same card pool for a long time. But there's the Disintegrate, and uh, that changes, that, that, that makes sense. He only has one mana, so he can prevent the Fireball, but not the Disintegrate. So, boom, that means that uh, Mahdi is winning here. And I already, in all honesty, when I saw the start of the Dead Guy Ill Player, I thought, mm, you need to go faster, because, you know, you're giving the Dead Guy Ill Player too many options here. Of course, you need the right cards to go faster, you know. Uh, and here you can see... Um, you know, a circle of protection will protect you, but you do need the mana. And in this case, he was coming one mana short. So, uh, congratulations, Mani, on winning this first game, round one. Really nice to see that Power Monolith deck in action. If you'd like to see more magic from the Knights of Thorn, keep an eye on the channel um, because I'll be featuring some more matches from this tournament. Thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And um, yeah, it was interesting. It was nice to see Power at Monolith being featured on the channel. Uh, and you can see how powerful a combo deck can be if you give them a little bit of too much of space. Um, for now, thank you for watching. If you want to see more uh, magic from this tournament, keep an eye on the channel. I will be posting more action from the Knights of Thorn Winter Edition Championship. Um, for now, thank you for watching. If you want to see more old school magic, you can click on the videos that are appearing right now on the screen or have a look at the channel on the channel page, I should say. Uh, if you want to help me out with the channel, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing this video, subscribe to the channel, I mean, sharing this video, leave a comment. Um, for now, thank you for watching and see you next time. <laughs>